Hello, welcome to a new video. Anchor just dropped a bunch of new chargers. They have some new features and they have a few less features at the same time. The first ones I'm looking at are the new 100 watt and 240 watt prime adapters. The 100 watt is a portable charger and looks like it would be replacing the older version. Is it better? No idea, have to watch to find out. The new 240 watt adapter is a whole other thing. It's a power strip and a power adapter in one with some very odd features. Does your power adapter need to have an app? This thing has buttons on it and a built-in display. So as usual, I will be comparing the efficiency and performance on these chargers to see if one of these will fit the bill for your needs. As always, ask questions if you don't understand something. This is gonna be a long video, ha. Better get a coffee if you wanna make it through. There's affiliate links, which earn me a couple percent but cost you nothing in the description, as well as links for more information. Many thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon. First up is the 100 watt prime power adapter. This is the opening act. The 240 watts gonna be the main event. This adapter is a very typical example of a USB power adapter. Foldable plugs, three ports on the end, and a very small size and moderately good appearance. I like the last year's model better, probably more expensive to make though. The packaging on this product is 100% paper. No single use plastics at all. Nice. The user manual is not very useful. No diagrams of power sharing or anything doesn't have any real information in it that isn't on the product itself. The power negotiation on this adapter is good, faster than most. The power sharing is different in that it is a power IQ3, which I'm not entirely sure what that means, but some practical examples. The USB-A ports are 5 volt only, and the power sharing is not even between the ports. Very similar to the Ugreen from last week. They also dropped the 12 volt mode. One of the claims on this newer adapter is that it stays in the sockets better than the previous generation of power adapters. And in general, I found this to be true. They scored the AC pins of the socket and it does help it stay in better. So this is a nice improvement. I know UK sockets are better and there are a lot of better options around the world. The power adapter operates about as expected. The idle power consumption on this adapter is okay. Right in line with other offerings at this power level. When turning the watts up, the adapter does have a threshold for turning on the AC power correction circuit that is quite high. So most of the time when you use this adapter, it will behave like a normal 65 watt adapter. Only when you use more than 40 watts or so does this mode kick in and the performance improves a bit. Not exactly a phone charger. The PPS mode is great, however. Over five amps overload point at 11 volts out, it doesn't go to the 20 volts on the PPS mode. When looking at the data for this power adapter, the efficiency on this adapter is an improvement over previous models. So it's reasonable efficiency means I expect it not to overheat. The voltage ripple and voltage levels on the DC side when you plug in your device were acceptable. It isn't best in class, but it's near the top for performance. It works fine. Check the value section later on to see if this is worth it. Next up is this 240 watt power adapter. This adapter is weird, and I'm gonna spend some time talking about it. It splits the adapter into two pieces. They do specifically say in the marketing material that this isn't for travel. It is a large adapter. They almost got rid of all the single-use plastic. Better, at least. What is very interesting is they split the certification logos between the various pieces, and I see why they did this, and I'll go over that in a few minutes. The main body of the charger, the part that plugs in the wall, has a fixed cable and a statement that it provides AC and DC power. The cable is proprietary and has five power connections. The adapter has the DOE6 logo on it, and there's some trickery going on here. Shiny front bit. I actually really like that matte finish on last year's adapters. I guess that's out, shiny adapters now. There is no user manual included, just a barcode for a link to one. I gave it a quick look, not a lot of information. The adapter part, the flat bit that would go on your desk, has an excellent selection of ports. Two AC outlets, the pop-up style, not a fan of that part, but each is individually switchable with a non-latching relay. So yes, these outlets consume power if you use them more of this when I plug it in. Then you get four USB-C ports and two USB-A ports. The Anchor Power IQ technology is three versus four on last year's adapters, and someone pointed this out in the comments. As far as I can tell, this means the USB-A ports are five volt only, and the power sharing is not quite as smart as the older charger. Although the older chargers had a lot less ports to deal with. The PPS mode is up to 11 volt only, but it does offer the full five amps, so no issue handling current hungry devices at full speed. The surface of this adapter is a dust and dirt magnet. The safety listing is on this flat adapter and the markings for the various USB outputs as well. 
It looks like the voltage is high from the other adapter, so all these converters are operating in what is called buck mode or voltage reducing. There is a display on the front of the adapter piece, and it looks like this borrows the technology that is in the power banks. The adapter's display is fairly accurate. It does bounce around a bit, but overall it's one of the best I've seen in a power adapter. The display can be turned off with a two second press of the side button. Another thing this power adapter has is Bluetooth connectivity. I didn't try this. It has a button and all the functions are available in that button, so don't make me download an app that needs access to my contacts to watch how much power I'm using. Anchor doesn't exactly have a clean record here. I guess at this point, does any company? Leave it in the comments. Is the Anchor app safe? It looks like this product doesn't offer alternate modes anyway, so the app is really just a monitoring tool. Once it gets plugged in, it uses a no, that can't be right. It says it has DOE 6. Well, I guess that's busted right away. It uses a lot of watts at idle. It depends on what you switch on to. The two AC power outlets, as mentioned, use relays to turn on and off the outputs. These relays are not latching style, so they continuously use power if you switch them on. Not great. The display uses power. You can see the idle power usage decrease when you turn it off. The best case is over a watt doing nothing. Let's see what happens when I pull the whole remote unit. Aha, so that's the trick to getting DOE certification. You have to disconnect the remote unit to shut down the wall unit so it doesn't use so much power. That's just not gonna happen and this shouldn't have that certificate. But games to be played. It unplugs, so it is a separate piece, I guess. Another issue is the high idle power usage is gonna hurt the performance of the adapter when it comes to efficiency. The performance for this adapter is in part very good, but also has some issues. The correction circuit that cleans up the incoming current wave is very effective in this power supply. The AC power is among the cleanest and most effective I have seen from any power adapter. In this regard, the power quality score, or a measure of the AC metrics, the noise on the line essentially, is extremely good. For efficiency, it isn't amazing here. It's not the worst I've seen, hitting 90% at any higher power levels, but it isn't class leading. At this point, you'd expect, you know, 92 to 93% efficiency. The DC side was good though, basically on target, and the ripple voltage and noise were very well controlled and within reason. An issue I ran into with this adapter is USB negotiation. I tried to get this adapter to supply the 28 volt mode and another port for a very long time. I tried all the port combinations and every time ended up with a negotiation loop. The adapter continuously reset. When I tried three ports for an even 80 watt power share across the three ports, no issues at all. In fact, all the other modes were fine. But when using the 28 volt mode, I had a lot of trouble using this adapter. Just using the 140 watt 28 volt port is fine, alone. But as soon as you plug in another USB device, it doesn't behave as expected for me. You may experience something different. All AC power adapters have to have separation or isolation between the mains and the DC side of the power adapter. This is measured as leakage current. The lower the leakage current, the better the adapter performs. In practical terms, this is the tingling feeling you get when using your laptop or phone with certain adapters. In terms of the isolation, there are no issues with leakage with the 100 watt prime adapter. This is expected with Anchor products. They generally perform very well in this category, or that's what I would say until I got to this 240 watt adapter. This thing is on the higher side of acceptable. So this charger does something unique and maybe not the greatest idea. There is a five foot cable between the two units. This cable has five wires running inside of it. One ground wire, a live wire, and a neutral wire carrying the AC power, and then it has two wires carrying the DC power. This is on its own fine, but bundle all this together and the wires form a capacitor so the AC power couples to the DC side more easily and you have higher leakage. This is gonna be a high tingle factor adapter. Okay, thermal time. For this big 240 watt adapter, it allowed itself to get quite hot. I guess one good thing is that the heat is spread apart by the five foot cable. So both ends get hot, but have more surface area to dissipate that heat. In this case, the adapter was still operating just fine after one hour during the thermal testing. You'll have to hot potato the adapter if you need to move it after asking for lots of watts though. The 100 watt adapter was mixed. It ran for half an hour. It's good efficiency means that it didn't get that hot, but after this point, it still initiated shutdown. So very similar to the Ugreen adapter last week, but not as hot. I'm not sure if this would always be the case, but just something to keep in mind. This isn't gonna supply continuous power. Well, 
let's compare these things. And yes, Anchor versus Anchor again. And I threw in the Bassius 100 watt GAN 3 adapter too, since it's still a pretty reasonable performance barring any quality issues. Anchor basically has direct comparisons with the 240 and 100 watt adapters that came out last year. The new versus old, although old only being a year ago, so not really old. The weights of these adapters are close but different. The big adapters are pretty close to each other, which considering the size of the newer one is impressive that they kept it that light. The remote unit is pretty light. It looks like they only quote that as the weight online. The new Anchor 100 Watt Prime is about 10 grams lighter. It's good they shaved a bit of weight out, but the performance is also shaved a bit, so is it worth it? It's very light for a 100 watt adapter. In terms of the idle performance, the newer 100 watt Anchor is in the top spot. It's an improvement on the previous generation, is small but welcome. The other anchor however is one of the worst I've ever seen. It got a DOE mark, but it looks like the remote unit has to be disconnected for that to be true. This is just not realistic, but it's how the game is played so technically good enough. The other power adapters are all pretty close to each other. The 240 watt uses too much power doing nothing if you complete the unit. Is this fair? In terms of the average performance, these adapters, average efficiency, specifically looking at the DOE 6 efficiency, that means 25-100% to 100 load efficiency, is a bit more spread out. That 240 watt adapter, on average, is a little on the lower end of things. There's several reasons for that, but the older 240 watt is pretty good. For context, this efficiency difference is 11 extra watts wasted at full load for the newer adapter. More than just the idle power. The Bassius GAN 3 still wins here, as it has for a long time. It has other issues, but it is efficient. The newer Anchor 100 watt Prime is more efficient, so they did make some improvement to the power design. Another positive. Okay, let's talk about value. These are all kind of expensive. The new 240 watt actually represents reasonable value though. It is expensive, but it does have a lot of watts on offer and a lot of other things like AC sockets. So it's more than one thing in the box, or boxes, and a cable. I didn't adjust the prices on these. The Bassius is often on sale, but this is the original retail pricing. The 200 watt prime adapters are at price parity with 85 US dollars. This is expensive, but they do offer some additional features over other models. So conclusion time. My opinion from the five chargers, the older Anchor 100 watt prime is still the one I'm gonna keep in my rotation, but the new one could be swapped in with minimal difference if you are looking for a new charger. The new 100 watt is a good option if you are in the market for something new. The main reason for not using it is I often use it as a phone charger and at low power levels, the older one performs just a little bit better at the low power levels. But for topping off big power banks or charging a laptop, the newer one is better efficiency wise. It just may restart charging halfway through. The Bassius 100 watt GAN 3 desktop charger is still another option for home use. It's getting old now, but I still use them. The older 240 watt Anchor Prime adapter is in my opinion better across the board. So is this update from Anchor worthwhile or do you think it's better to wait for the next round? Thanks for watching. There's links in the description. Goodbye.